Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're going to be showing you the entire Warhammer Conquest All 80 Issues painted. Now I had planned to simply have this book on the table and pick up the miniatures one at a time, but there was a little snag in my plans. I had underestimated how many miniatures there actually are. I don't actually have enough room for this book and all the miniatures on the table to effectively show you that way. So what's going to follow is a editing and logistical nightmare for poor old James as I'm going to have to cut between issue to miniature one at a time. So with no further ado, this is the entire Warhammer Conquest 40k collection painted. Enjoy. The first thing we are greeted with is issue one, which is three Primaris Space Marines. One looking at kind of a, at a handheld thing, one issuing orders and one standard brother with a bolter. So the ones we got are here. This is what they look like painted. Now, as you can see, I decided to go for Ultramarines because that's what was on the actual issue. Um, just your standard primary Space Marines. These are the guys I believe that come in the uh, first uh, strike box set. Just the three of them there. So that's what you get with issue one. Issue two comes with three Death Guard Plague Marines and they're quite straightforward ones. They're the same guys that you get in the first strike box set. I decided to kind of throw a lot of Agrax Earthshade on them. Now one thing is that when you're buying these issues, you don't have all the paints as you start it. However, like most Warhammer fans that were picking this up, they simply just got their own paints and went into it. Um, fun little miniatures. As you can see, it's just your standard Death Guard tree, Death Guard Marines that you got with issue two of Warhammer Conquest. Issue three came with three Reavers, uh, all in kind of great action phase, some of the newer models, so we'll just have a quick look at them. So these are the three boys you got. As you can see, I decided to stick with the ultramarine color. Uh, paint up very well, absolutely nothing wrong with them, good solid quality miniatures, and that is what you get in issue three. Issue four came with six poxwalkers, and this is the start of what became too many poxwalkers to paint in these issues. <laughs> They're beautiful miniatures, very interesting to paint, but it's just that there is so many of them. Uh, enjoy in painting these six because they are only a taste of the multitude of miniatures that have yet to come. Now, as you can see, they're Interesting enough. There's lots of great variation in them. This guy basically has a, a stick with nails in it. This guy has a nice big axe. This guy, I decided to try and paint him a little green because variety. Um, this fella has great pustules coming out of his gut. Uh, the biles and pus things, well, these were quite fun to paint. This guy has an arm that's turning into an actual tentacle. And this fella has, well, just his guts are hanging out and I decided to add a little bit of blood for the blood god effect to that. So that's what you get in issue four. Issue five comes with what's called a Primaris Lieutenant. Now there's a, a new aspect in ninth edition where lieutenants and captains have a, a bigger effect on the Primaris Space Marines. So this is basically what it looks like on the cover. And this is what I opted to do in the build. Now, as you can see with two options, you have the helmet and the bare head. I opted to go for the helmet because my painting skills are thoroughly average and I wasn't confident enough to do the uh, head on its own just yet. This is also a unique model that's unique to Warhammer Conquest. So I didn't really want to um, mess it up too badly, but this is what you get in issue five. Issue six is pretty much the same as issue three in that you get three new Plague Marines from the Death Guard. Uh, exact same Marines as issue three, just 
presented in a slightly different order. Issue 7 came with some shades, so there was no miniatures included in that one. However, Issue 8 came with the Librarian, which is a really cool and really powerful unit for the Space Marines. He's essentially a psyker. Now this one was quite fun to paint because it has these long flowing robes. Um, he has great kind of decor on his body. The quality of the miniature meant that there was easy ways for the paint to pick up. So even a thoroughly average painter like myself could come out with a model that I was quite happy with. And that is the librarian that comes with issue eight. Issue 9 was six more pox walkers, which um, again was fun to paint, but it was the same miniatures again, and uh, I had no idea the fatigue that was to come in terms of being sick of painting pox walkers when it came to Warhammer Conquest. However, this was the second set of six, making a grand total of 12 pox walkers so far. This is issue 10, which was the Maiafic Blight Hauler. Now this was a fun thing to paint, as it has lots of cool little nooks and crannies. The back here is a complete kind of dirty flesh color. Uh, it's kind of a, a tank tread drone thing that just basically launches ordnance at uh, poor unfortunate space marines or anything the Imperium that is not a death guard. A cool little model, a cool little miniature. It was easy to build and quite fun to paint. And uh, I found that the Death Guard in this series were among the most fun things to paint because it just gave you great scope for creativity with the dirt and the filth and things like teeth in the front of it that make no sense in real life but are just fun in the 40k universe. Now issue 11 came with three Primaris Aggressors which are kind of big chunky boys which I'm sure are a great backup for the uh, Space Marines when they're taking on the large amounts of Primaris or large amounts of Poxwalkers and um, Blight Haulers. As you can see, they have heavy duty ammo cans on the back. So these are guys are designed to shred through hordes of bad guys. They come out quite well. They were fun to paint and they're among the newer model kits. So that is what you get in issue 11. Issue 12 comes with a Death Guard champion, which is called a Foul Blind Spawn. Now this was a miniature that was great fun and very interesting to paint because he comes with a kind of a tank on his back in which he spreads filth and postulence all over the battlefield. Something akin to a kind of a, a flamethrower, but uh, more that he destroys and ruins the entire landscape so even if you do take the terrain back it's ruined uh, as you can see here is a nice little pipe with uh, goo coming off the end of it and it was a fun miniature to paint and there was a nice little bit of lower on this so issue 12 is your foul blight spawn Issue 13 came with the first of your Imperium armoured containers some ammo boxes and a couple of barrels now it seems like a very boring thing to kind of get, but they were actually kind of fun to paint. And it is a worthy addition to your collection and to your battlefield as, I don't know, it adds a little bit of scenery to the game and just adds a little bit of flavor to it. Now the barrels were fun to paint because, you know, it's just mucky oil barrels. Um, it was a fun and simple paint issue because there wasn't much to it. There was a little bit of assembly in this, but it was just basically putting together a rectangle. So it's one of three sets of armor containers you get. And it does have options, which is doors open. In this case, it decided to keep the doors closed. But in one of the later containers, I have the doors open. So that is issue 13. Issue 14 came with a dry brush and painting techniques, but no miniature. So issue 15 is what we're looking at, which is the one with the biologist putrefier which was another unique Death Guard unit. Um, same type of thing, chemical, biological warfare. He was a very interesting miniature to paint because he has a whole load of, um, of little urns and heads and goop and things here on his back that he no doubt uses to combine and make his own concoctions. Um, it was a fun miniature to paint because I had what was called Moot Green in my collection of paints and I started to kind of just douse it into him a little bit. 
but uh, one of the more interesting Death Guard pieces, and one if you are kind of hunting for aspects of this issue or this collection on eBay, is one that's worth getting. Now that's number 15, Biologist Putrefier. Now issue 16 comes with an Inceptor, two Intercessors, and two Hellblasters. Um, a good issue to find if you're out in the wild because it just comes with five Primaris Marines. Um, the Incessor comes out quite well. He has his little thing here in the back that hides him up, but you actually get a collection of three in this one. So be wary that if you get other issues with Incessors on it, that they might not have the little uh, transparent guide tube, but he comes out well. One of the newer miniatures from uh, Games Workshop. Quite enjoyed painting that one. The simple intercessors come out fine. They're your standard Primaris Marines. Nothing at all wrong with them. All push fit. Uh, everything comes together quite well. And of course you have the two Hellblasters with their plasma rifles, which are the new big chunky ones. And uh, quite a good value issue, this one, issue 16, which comes with these five separate Primaris Marines. Issue 17 comes with another armoured container and all the resultant bits. Now, as you can see, I decided to go for a bit of a, an ultramarine tone here with this one because, you know, the I'm sure the ultramarines, any planet they land on, they do need ordnance. So it comes with a nice set of things, uh, three barrels, four ammo kits, and the armoured container itself, which was fun and simple to paint. So that is issue 17. Issue 18 came with um, a playmat and some new paints, but no miniatures. Issue 19, however, came with Lord Feltius and three of his Terminators. Now, this was a very interesting issue to get because Lord Feltius himself is an exceptionally grafted model. He was great fun to paint. I actually had to paint him ahead of time because my friend Tony was so anxious to field him in one of his uh, games that I had to skip ahead a couple of issues to paint him and open him early. Um, a beautiful model. This one in particular was great fun to paint. And that's not to kind of belittle his three lads as well because they are superb Death Guard Terminators. Extra powerful, stand out really well, very high melee and infantry range specialists. I mean, these are stunning looking things and they come with a couple of little nurglings and tentacles, you know. So whilst the primary space marines can look a bit kind of uniform, Death Guard definitely have character with all their unique little models and the certain characters that they come up with. So that is issue 19, one of the better value issues of Warhammer Conquest. Issue 20 comes with the last of the Munitorium armored containers along with the basically the ammo containers and three more barrels. Now, as you can see, this is what I was talking about with the other ones, that you can build it with the doors open. Now, most players tend not to do it because it leads to kind of shenanigans where pieces are hiding in the center of the container and cannot be attacked. But I thought for the sake of variety, I wanted to try it with the doors open. One thing I will say, though, is that it is a little flimsy. So if you have a table set up, set up at home, it's probably better to keep this one at home rather than take it to a friend's house for... Um, for playing as the doors are only held on by a little bit of glue here at the sides. So that was issue 20. Issue 21 came with three more Reavers, which are the same as the ones that were in the issues prior to this. Uh, same push fit models, fun to paint. The interesting thing about this one is that if you're painting in order, your painting skills kind of sharpen a little bit, as I hopefully minded. And I found that I did a better job on these ones than I did the guys at the very start. Now, that is issue 21. Issue 22 came with a texture paint called Astro Granite and a dry brush, but no miniatures. So we skip on to issue 23, which came with Battlefield accessories. Now, these actually were a nice little surprise because it's stuff that as a Warhammer player you would never actually get but um, by buying this issue you end up with them anyway and having these little things on the table adds just that lovely little touch to your games. I have to say I found these very simple and very pleasant to paint because there's not much to them but they add great atmosphere and great 
little life and variety to your game. So just little things again, like the barrels, you've gotten plenty of these with the um, Munitorium container kits, but even a small thing like a little fuel tank, kind of a little gas tank just here on the terrain just adds that little bit more to your game and makes it just that little bit special. Now this was issue 23 and if you do see this issue floating in the wild it is worth picking up maybe one or two of them because it's amazing how these little things just add to your game. And that was issue 23. Now issue 24 and issue 25 was your Dreadnought. Now this was one I was looking forward to because um, I'd never made or painted a Dreadnought before and I had gotten one slightly cheaper than the normal price thanks to the um, Warhammer Conquest kits. Now as you can see I based it a little bit and I add little bits like a skull and whatnot because I wanted to put a little bit of extra effort into this uh, miniature. And I have to say it was fun to paint and I'm quite pleased at how it came out. It stands out on the table really nicely. Now it doesn't come with any of the transfers like the Ultramarines logo or Second Company logo or anything like that. So just fair warning, if you get any of the Warhammer Conquests you won't get transfers in any of the issues. But nevertheless it's the miniatures that you're after and transfers are not the hardest things in the world to get but this is what you get with issues 24 and 25 and is well worth picking up. Issue 26 was simply more paints but what we got in issue 27 and 28 were the Rhino transport for the Death Guard. Now this was a fun but bitty little thing to paint. It comes with an insane amount of peripheries, chains and symbols and uh, pikes and dead beings and people and things like that. Um, there's some great variety here as you have uh, a space marine helmet here, you have a tau helmet here, you have chains, skulls, god knows what sorts of bits and pieces. And because it's death card, you can kind of death card, you can kind of dirty it up enough as well without having to worry about being too kind of um, clean. Now, it's interesting as well because it came with the symbols for all the chaos gods. Now, the Warhammer conquest to its credit is tells you which ones which symbols to use and which symbols not to use because I have the Death Guard one here but it does come with the Korn, the Zench and I believe the Slaanesh symbols so even if you're a Warhammer player that has a bit of a bits box and keeps extra symbols for I don't know terrain or kind of things or basing things like that uh, this these two issues are a very good one to get because not only do you get the Rhino you get um, a lot of little peripheries that you can use to add to other bits and pieces so that's issues 27 and 28. Now this issue is an interesting one, 29. It comes with a captain and three sergeants. Uh, as you can see, one is a Hellblaster, one is a standard Primaris, one is a captain and one is an Inceptor. So if you're looking for leadership for your Primaris Marines, uh, issue 29 is a good one to pick up. Now as you can see, the Inceptor here came with the white kind of transparent thing prop itself up that was in the previous issue I don't think it came with this issue but he was simple and fun to paint the captain was would you believe it an intimidating enough paint job I'm only a thoroughly average painter but uh, it still came out quite well the detail is quite pronounced and it allows you to kind of being an average painter to get away with it a little bit more than you normally would mainly because it's such a beautiful model but that is the captain and we have here two sergeants now because I didn't get any transfers I opted to designate their rank by painting their kneecaps uh, white now as you can see you have the Hellblaster plasma rifle here and you have the sergeant here with his red helmet on the uh, normal Primaris Marine so that really is kind of a, a section of leaders that you get with issue 29. Now issue 30 comes with the first of two kind of Risa runes terrain kits. Um, it's a nice little issue actually because these come out quite well. It was a fun thing to paint because there was nothing overly complicated about it. You can be as detailed or as uh, scarce as you wish. Um, a simple dry brush brings out a lot of the details. So 
Despite being full of little bits and pieces, these are actually quite a quick little paint. I mean, the manhole cover in itself was very simple to paint, but comes out quite easily. And you just have ruined buildings that serve as, well, partial cover for your models, but also kind of just nice little bits of terrain to dot the actual uh, the table with to make your game just that little bit more realistic. So the Rise of Ruins is issue 30. Now issue 30 came with uh, more paints, but no actual miniatures. So we move on to issue 32, which was the Space Marine Apothecary. Now this is definitely a good issue to pick up if you're only snagging certain issues, because this miniature retails for about 30 euros on the website, but was sold here by Warhammer Conquest for about 11 euros. Now it was a miniature I was very worried about painting because white is a nightmare to work with. Um, very easy to get wrong, very easy to kind of blotch if you're trying to shade in the, um, the recesses to kind of give extra details. So uh, this was the best standard I could get it to and I didn't want to mess with it anymore in case I actually botched the entire job because white unfortunately is a very unforgiving uh, paint. Um, I also kind of ransacked my spare ultramarines to give him a transfer because it's just because it was such a high standard model and one that stands out quite well. How useful he is on the field, I actually don't know yet because I've never played him and thanks to Nurgle's uh, rot that is currently infesting the entire globe, I haven't had a game of 40k in quite some time. But uh, rest assured, when uh, things do go back to normal, um, he'll be one of the first things I will try with my new Space Marines once I get to field, uh, get to field my models again. So that was issue 32. Issue 33 came with some new interesting terrain pieces, which was thermic plasma conduits. Now, these things were, well, as you can imagine, were very simple to paint and actually fun to paint as well. And not, as well as that, they were easy to assemble. Um, there was lots of kind of little scope for detail here. So if you have some of the brighter prints like uh, Temple Guard Blue or anything like that, it um, it allows you to kind of give a little kind of shade effect. And again, it's just terrain that's good for cover, but also it forces certain models into a bottleneck if you wanted to kind of arrange your terrain in a certain way. Um, it comes with cool little things. If you ever wanted to do a narrative play, these bits come out, which are just basically thermal charges that go into it. but uh, you don't have to glue it, but because you can just stick it in. So even if you wanted to kind of do a homebrew mission or a makeup mission where you needed to kind of get the conduits out of it for bonus points or whatever, you know, your imagination is the your limit when it comes to these types of games. That if you wanted to make this an objective piece and remove the two conduits as a part of the objective, it gives you that little option. So that is issue 33 of Warhammer Conquest. Now, issue 34 comes with leadership for the Death Guard. You have, of course, a Plague Champion, a Malignant Plague Caster, and a Noxious Blightbringer. Now, these are very interesting and fun models to look at and paint. Uh, they're just, the Death Guard, I think, are better than the Primaries ones because they just come with such fantastic variety. And because they're dirty, filthy things that even if you make a mistake, it just adds to the flavor and to the character of it. The detail on these things is just fun. I mean, you have a fly here accompanying this thing just for the sake of it. This is the champion with a nice big bell to kind of signify his authority and leadership. He has a little nurgling with another bell hanging off him. It's, uh, again, just a fun thing to paint. And this was a very good issue because instead of feeling kind of like the monotony of painting poxwalkers or yet another Primaris champion or kind of more terrain that's, well, I mean, is simple but not very interesting to paint. These things brought a nice little bit of challenge and a little bit of variety and gave you an opportunity to paint these things how you would like it. So that is issue 34 of Warhammer Conquest. Issue 35 comes with a Space Marine Chaplain. Now this was a really cool little character. Um, he was quite simple to paint because I normally prime all my models with black. So just the simple rattle can was enough to do 90% of this model. And the rest of it was just basically touching on the bits and pieces that needed to be done. Um, the chaplain is, well, 
He's kind of a, a heroic figure in the 40k universe and one of the more powerful miniatures. But this issue in particular is one that's worth looking out for because he's a unique enough model and he looks class on the battlefield. So that is issue 35. Issue 36 comes with more paints but no miniatures. Issue 37 comes with the final part of the Ryza Ruins. So they're exactly the same as the previous issue. Um, so again, nothing wrong with them. I decided to follow the same uh, paint scheme for these ones as I did the last ones, just in case I wanted to pretend that the building ruins that they were working in was an extra large one. But yeah, uh, a simple straightforward paint job. I think I did it all in one evening. So that is issue 37. Issue 38 comes with the Death Guard Plague Surgeon. Now this is a really cool model to paint and work on because he's just quite sinister. I mean, his scalpel is a big chainsword. Um, he has a drill for, I don't know, kind of taking out any gene seeds or kind of replacing any organs you'd like. He's a hooded figure that's quite sinister. Um, lots of detail, including a kind of a severed head here on the back and it was one of the more fun miniatures to paint. Quite a kind of an ominous, horrific figure that sums up the Death Guard quite nicely. So issue 38 is one that's worth looking out for. Issue 39 comes with your second Space Marine Captain. Now, um, unfortunately, I didn't do as good a job with this one as I had hoped. So what I did really is I decided to muck him up and if anything, I learned a little bit about it, that if you make a very bad mistake in terms of detail or blotchiness or things like that, if you just cover the figure in muck and blood, you can kind of cover the mistakes. So even though he is a Space Marine captain, he's covered in crap like the rest of the normal grunts. And if anything, that to me made him a bit better than your normal captain because he wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Um, Weathering is a big part of model making and I can see why a lot of model makers do it because just even once I kind of dirty them up a small bit I decided to dirty them up a little bit more and I nearly had as much fun kind of seeing where the blood spatter would have gone or the muck on his cape would have gone as I did actually painting and making him. So it's a great way to add character to your leaders. So. If anything, yep, as far as I'm concerned, this is a Space Marine Captain that leads from the front. And he's on issue 39. Issue 40 came with some lore on the Space Marine uh, Marnius Calgar, but there was no miniatures. However, issues 41 and 42 came with the Plague Burst Crawler, which is basically the Death Guard tank. Now, this thing took... A little bit of assembly but uh, nevertheless it was straightforward enough and quite fun to paint you do have options with the, um, the side weapons here but uh, no it was a very interesting piece to kind of do there's lots of detail so I mean as you can see there's kind of rot and pustules and things like that if you wanted to use something like nihilus oxide to, to extenuate it if you want to throw a bit of rust or even a bit of typhus corrosion which I threw here at the front but uh, a cool little tank that uh, has great detail and is certainly a formidable presence on the battlefield. So that's issues 41 and 42. Issue 43 comes with thermic plasma regulators. Now you get two of them in the collection, but uh, they're interesting enough terrain pieces. It's um, basically something I presume if you had a sniper unit or something that wanted an expert of vision that you can use to stand up. It's also something you can kind of take cover behind, but um, there's new unique rules in the game for these that sometimes they can explode or uh, they kind of provide different aspects of cover, but it's just something interesting that you can add to the battlefield. But as yet, thanks to Nurgle's rot blighting the planet, I haven't had a chance to actually use these in a game yet. But nevertheless, nice things that come in issue 43. Issue 44 comes with more dry paints but no miniatures, whereas issue 45 comes with Space Marine Scouts. Now these are an old kit um, and you can kind of tell when you're painting them because the quality dip between say the newer, even the Poxwalker models and these ones is quite telling. There's not the same amount of detail. Your scouts don't look quite as 
realistic as the Primaris or even the uh, the Death Guard Poxwalkers in some pieces. It's just it's just because they're older models. Now, I mean, this one I had fun with because he's uh, he's lugging along a big, huge kind of GPMG version of the Bolter. So I threw a lot of muck on his front because. Uh, well, basically, they're heavy things, and once you kind of fall down with it, you fall down flat. It's, uh, yeah, I, I ask any GPMG gunner, and they'll tell you life is a misery when you're carrying that thing. But anyway, th this fella I enjoyed painting because I just covered him in muck, which is generally what happens. And this fella I gave a shotgun. Now, the one good thing about this kit is it comes with options. So, as you can see here on the picture, they're all with bolt guns, but... Uh, just for the sake of variety, I wanted to try them out with different loadouts, uh, but I did find the GPMG gunner in this one the most interesting to paint. So that is issue 45. Now issue 46 is an exceptional issue because it comes with a lot of goodies. You get a fetid blight drone, a Lord of Contagion, and four new uh, Death Guard Plague Marines. And it's basically one single issue. There's great value in this particular issue. So if you're buying Warhammer Conquest out of sequence, definitely keep an eye out for issue 46. The Blight Drone is great fun to paint. Uh, it's quite impressive on the battlefield. It looks very well because it stands up from kind of pipes that are hanging out the back here. So it does give the impression that it's in flight. And a very sinister, horrible looking thing that was great fun to paint and you know any kind of paints that you have with goop and goo or whatever you can throw on top of it to have it kind of spraying out the lord of contagion um is well he's a great model i mean he's a huge two-handed axe kind of chain axe covered in blood he's standing in a load of poor nerglings he's got a big massive cape he has smoke coming off the the top of his standard um, just a fantastic model and a great leader for your Death Guard army. You have new Death Guard types, which are kind of unique poses, actually. So, I mean, like this is another one, possibly an aspiring kind of leader with his own standard with smoke coming out the top. You have here, this guy has just got, what, a mouth coming out the side of his belly and he's got horns coming off his head. Kind of ugly looking knife. Um, lots of grenades on the back so a fellow you don't want to be kind of you don't want to question his parentage uh, another fella here with kind of basically an extra huge kind of backpack now he's only carrying a bolter but it does seem like that he could be carrying a flamethrower or anything like that but just another miniature that stands out especially this pauldron here which is just basically all skulls so these are interesting death guard uh, marines and Finally, one here, which is just a guy which lobs. He's basically a grenadier with, of course, a severed head attached to his backpack. Now, this issue, 46, as I said, is one that's definitely worth looking out for in the wild because it comes with some very nice bits and pieces. Now, issue 47 comes with the Landspeeder. Now, this was a model I was looking forward to building, but I actually ended up quite resenting because... Um, it's a very old mold kit, and as a result, it, I found it quite difficult to kind of glue together effectively. Um, there's one or two little gaps in it, it didn't quite fit, and that's basically because the mold on model kits tends to warp over time. So, also, Warhammer have, or Citadel, have come up with a new kind of modern version of the Landspeeder, but it was. It's an iconic vehicle, but. I thought I'd have more fun painting it than I actually did, but that's mainly due to the model age and perhaps, of course, the quality of the plastic that's in it, but uh, this is the first time I made one and it was more chore than joy, I have to be honest. But nevertheless, now that I have one, I'm glad that it's painted and I'm glad that it's in my collection. Um, yep, if you're on the lookout for a land speeder but don't want to pay full price for it, the Warhammer Conquest magazine is certainly a good way to pick one up because the magazine itself does come with a nice little bit of lore and detail on the model, model itself. So that is issue 47. Issue 48 comes with the classic Space Marine bikes. Now these again are also kind of old model kits. Uh, a lot easier to assemble though than the, um, the Landspeeder because, well, there's less to go wrong. It's just basically two halves put together with a sp space marine put on top. 
Um, you don't have a great amount of variety to it, but I just decided to kind of put them to their sides like that so that one could be going off in one direction and the other going off the other direction in order to flank something or surround it. But um, I've heard people complaining about these kits, but no, to be honest with you, I found these ones quite fun, simple to make, and uh, yeah, quite nice. I did try to do a wheelie with one, but the, the model just didn't quite kind of permit it. But going off to the side is enough of a, an action pose for me with this particular kit. So that is issue 48, two Space Marine bikes. Now issue 49 just comes with more layer paints and no miniatures. However, issue 50 comes with 10 Death Card Chaos Cultists. Now these are also an old little kit, but kind of a charming one. They're basically Imperial Guardsmen that have turned traitor. And um, like, they're detailed enough. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. You, you can get, I believe, a set of Death Guard Cultists for a tenor these days. It's such a common and old kit, but what I liked about this is the color scheme you can adapt to it. Now, I mean, I deviated from the cover a little bit, but as long as you kind of put some symbol of Death Guard green on it, you can uh, basically attach them to any army. So, given the variety of clothing and the rags and bits and pieces that you attach to them, um, it's a bit of fun that you can be creative in how you paint them. Uh, they're nice little miniatures. I mean, they're just they're just bios that decided, right, I'm off to support Nurgle. They grab whatever kind of semblance of uniform they can have to identify with their chosen Chaos God and go off and uh, attack the False Emperor. It's, um, it's a fun little kit. Simple to paint and uh, I don't know why but I just find the Death Guard cultists kind of charming in that they're simply lads taking what they can get off to fight the Emperor for God knows whatever reason. Uh, I mean even this guy now he's just got Basically, it's a stick with barbed wire and nails around it, you know, uh, creative little fellas and not long for this world. So that is issue 50. Issue 50 is a hemothrope reactor, which is a nice big chunky terrain piece. Um, this was actually fun to paint because um, ugh, there's lots of scope for little details and even if you only have three or four different colors of paint so you can actually pick out the details in this miniature quite well. Um, it's a nice big terrain piece and it's big enough that say larger pieces like the Imperial Dreadnought can hide behind it. So it looks well on the battlefield, quite imposing and it stands out on the table a lot. So not something I ever would have bought but it came with the magazines and Warhammer Conquest so if you see issue 51 it's worth picking up for yourself. Issue 52 comes with more paints, however, issue 53 comes with another Space Marine bike. Now, you only get one bike with this issue, so if you're hunting for issues of Warhammer Conquest out in the wild, I'd suggest you get issue 48 as opposed to issue 53, because 48 comes with two Space Marine bikes. So, this is the three of them assembled together. So, as you can see, I had wanted one going down the middle, one guy veering off to the left and another fellow veering off to the right. Um, a fun, simple kit, but basically if you are getting these issues out of context or on their lonesome, make sure you get issue 48 instead of issue 53 because you'll get two bikes instead of one. Now if you're a Death Guard fan, I would definitely suggest that you pick up issue 54, which is Typhus. Herald of Nurgle. Now, Captain Typhus, um, I just happened to be reading Flight of the Eisenstein, which is in the Horus Harris series, and Captain Typhus, this character, is actually mentioned in it. So it was fun uh, painting up this villain whilst reading about him at the same time, and the model itself is fantastic. Uh, like, the detail on it is superb. You have Nurglings hanging off him, you have a big, huge scythe, which is his primary weapon. Um, I added little bits. Uh, there's a selection of skulls that you can get that I added into it. I added in a kind of a, a leftover uh, Imperium symbol, possibly from the Chaos Rhino, actually, that I put down here on the base just to symbolize some poor Imperial that he goosed. Uh, the same thing here with a kind of a, a spare weapon. So the base is nice and chunky so that it gives you plenty of room to add bits to it. And he has here kind of a, a cloud of flies that comes out of his back. So this is and was a fantastic miniature to paint and if you feel like reading a bit more about Typhus 
pick up Flight of the Eisenstein or even if you wanted to read the old Lexicanum to get a kind of a breakdown on, on this Space Marine or Death Guard villain in the 40k universe. A thoroughly enjoyable piece to paint and a great issue and that is issue 54. So if you are hunting these in the wild and you are a Death Guard player, make sure you snag this one. Now issue 55 is a new terrain piece, Alchemite Pipes, and it is a very impressive one. It's uh, something that's quite tall, stands out an awful lot. Um, it's something I thought was, it worked best when I just made it kind of quite dirty and grimy, so I threw a big wash of Agrex Earthshade all over it. But it's another big huge terrain piece, so if you have larger models, like say, the Dreadnought or the Blight Drone or something like that, and you want to take a bit of cover, this is a terrain piece you can use to do so. It also comes with a cool little manhole that you can just randomly throw in your terrain for uh, for the fun and style of it. So this is issue 55, a nice big chunky terrain piece that for, what, the price of a tenner is great value. And now we have issue 56, which I think is an issue that is worth remembering because it comes with one of the best value kind of collections in the entire thing, including the Primaris Ancient, which is a miniature you can only get, I believe, now in a, a large collection of miniatures. Now, a lot of people only wanted the Primaris Ancient, but uh, he did come with the uh, 8th edition box set, but um, you can't buy him on his own, and it's a very imposing and solid figure so for the sake of 11 quid if you wanted to get him just for that price instead of paying i think what 40 for a kind of a command section you get him along with a section of other kind of marines including a lieutenant um a sergeant and five bios that are happy to kind of go off and do their own thing or um possibly now a second lieutenant i can't remember if i painted him just to make him a lieutenant for the sake of it or if it's two lieutenants but you have plenty of options with this but this primaris ancient in particular especially if you're rocking two or three chapters and you don't want to spend 120 euros to get just three primaris ancients you'd be as well picking up issue 56 of the warhammer conquest that's out in the wild to uh, just get it because essentially it's a tenor for that model and you get all these extra Issue 57 came with more paints, but no miniature, whereas issue 58 came with a kind of a Space Marine attack bike. Now this is an old kit again. Um, it's kind of a, a quad bike, but an interesting little speeder thing as you come with um, two Space Marines, one with uh, well, a heavy bolter attached to the quad bike, and of course this fires on its own here as well. It's an old kit. Um, and because it's an old kit, it uh, you had to force it into shape a little bit, but nevertheless, I mean, nothing absolutely wrong with it. Uh, I enjoyed painting it, I enjoyed mucking it up and kind of destroying it with dirt and whatnot, because quad bikes being quad bikes, uh, or, well, trikes really, because it's only got three wheels. But, uh, yep, nothing wrong with this little kit, and it's in issue 38, or, or sorry, excuse me, issue 58 of Warhammer Conquest. Issue 59 comes with a new Inceptor, two Hellblasters and Intercessors. So it's just five Space Marines, good value for what you're paying for the price of an issue. Um, nothing at all wrong with them. This fella, I tried to kind of give him a bit more forward momentum, but uh, well, it's unique, but I don't think I'll be doing it again. I'll probably try and keep them more upright in future. And uh, yep. Nothing wrong with it, it's a simple issue, issue 59 if you see it in the wild. It's worth picking up because it's good value for money because you get nice interesting little bits in it. Now issue 60 was a bit of a chore because it came with a lot more pox walkers and well I feel like I've painted enough those, of those things to last me the rest of my life. Nevertheless you get a uh, death guard champion with a kind of an interesting uh, plague uh, Poxwalker thing here on his shoulder. Um, now just to give you a heads up, there's a copy of this in another issue, but in order to complete the Death Guard Champion in the other issue, you need bits from issue 60. However, this is one of the two variants that's available to you at that time, and you have 10, of course, uh, little Poxwalkers. Now, I don't know why I don't like painting them, because they're actually 
there's great detail in them, you know, I mean, they're superbly sculpted models and there is kind of fantastic variety in imagining what happened to these figures, like this guy now seems delighted with the fact that there's an arm growing out of his back. Um, this fella is got basically has conjured together a, a rifle that is fit to fall apart with goggles, happy out. This guy, I actually enjoyed the idea that he was a, well, a chemical specialist sent in to try and stop um, Nurgle's rot from taking over, but the thing just melted his suit and turned him into one of the pox walkers and off he goes trying to uh, take revenge on the rest of the world. This guy is just your simple bio, he has a big horn growing out of his head and um, is just off to have fun. This guy has a prosthetic arm, has his guts hanging out, his tentacles growing everywhere. Um, seems happy enough though, there's a smile on his face. Another fella here with a big hammer, so you could kind of just put these down as Imperial citizens that um, basically got caught. I mean, this fella now is definitely a worker because this is a pipe wrench with a string attached with a nail on the end of it. So, I mean, there's a lot of improvised weaponry and great thought put into these figures. I think it's because they're so squishy on the actual battlefield that people don't give them the, uh, the credence they deserve. But as actual miniatures, they're great fun to paint. But because they're so, well, squishy on the battlefield, uh, they don't kind of get the love and care and attention they deserve sometimes as a sculpt. Beautiful miniatures, but there's just so many of them. Anyway, if Poxwalkers are your thing, issue 60 has you covered. Now, issue 61 is a nice issue to pick up because it comes up with a lot of objective markers. And there's some really cool little things in here. You have a shrine to a fallen saint of the emperor that was fun to paint, actually stands out quite nicely. You have imperial objective markers, which are, well, you know, they're quite functional. And instead of having a flat token on the ground, you can have one of these things as a representation. Uh, this is just another kind of objective marker. So if you want to do a narrative gameplay that kind of, instead of just going here, you're holding what possibly could be um, a radio transmitter, something here, same as that, some kind of icon or for the Mechanicus. Uh, this objective marker I thought was pretty cool. It's uh, basically a servitor with, um, well, kind of a, a thing that you strap down to uh, do a bit of surgery in people. And I had fun putting a little bit of blood for the blood god on top of that to kind of make it stand out. This was a bit bitty to assemble, but nevertheless, it's a, a cool little thing that stands out. So if you wanted to pretend you're in a hospital, you have the usual ammo cases, including uh, here, this one with a lot of extra kind of, well, extra magazines. So a nice cool little issue to actually pick up because uh, I think no one's ever kind of, we've all thought of objective markers, but never thought about actually going off and getting them. But uh, nevertheless, if you want to pay it for a 10 euro, you have a nice set of lovely little objective markers here in issue 61. Issue 62 took me back to my airfix days in terms that I felt like I was kind of constructing um, vehicles again. Uh, these are cool little things to kind of make because they're, well, they're just kind of terrain pieces, but it does give the idea of kind of construction. Now, I mean, they're obviously not the most practical kind of, uh, uh, well, kind of mechanical devices or implements, but they certainly do cool, do, do look cool, and they're great for the old aesthetic of the game, and they serve as cover as well. So, uh, not something you have to have, but certainly a nice little thing to have. Um, nothing wrong with them. They were quite fun to paint and you only needed about three or four colors to kind of get it all done. And I had them glued and painted in one night. So that's issue 62 galvanic servo haulers. Now issue 63 came with what thankfully were the last of the pox walkers in the Warhammer Conquest collection. It comes with the other variant of the Death Guard, or Death Guard uh, Space Marine that comes with it. Now um, just to give you a heads up, you won't be able to, if you get this issue on its own, you won't be able to complete him because the piece that's needed, the alternate fit for him is in the earlier issue with the pox walkers. But nevertheless, he comes out quite nice, has a nice kind of purple robe on him, um, tentacles, a nice plasma weapon, and the 10 pox walkers are the same as the ones with the previous sprue. So, um, like I said, they're fun to paint, it's just there's so many of them and they're so squishy that they never last long on the battlefield. But if poxwalkers are your thing, issue 63 has you covered. 
Now issue 64 came with more paints and Astro granite refill, uh, but no miniatures, whereas issue 65 came with two classic Horus Heresy era Space Marine Captains. Now I remember these two miniatures from the old Betrayal of Kalth uh, board game, which was set in the 30th millennium as opposed to the 40th millennium. But nevertheless, um, you can paint them here. Now this is the Space Marine Captain, and he's a Captain in Terminator armor, and uh, he's exactly the same as the one in the Betrayal of Kalth box set, which I had. So I was that was literally the first box set I ever got of 40k, so my paint job on that was, quite frankly, brutal, and I won't show it to you now because it's embarrassing. However, this gave me a chance to kind of do the character a little bit more justice. And this guy was the bad guy in the Betrayal of Kalth box set. However, in this one, you can see that with just the ultramarine colors, you can throw in another exotic-looking space marine captain with possibly kind of relic armor that's honorable from the 30th uh, millennium. So two nice, unique little miniatures that you don't often get, that you can get in issue 65 of Warhammer Conquest. Issue 66 comes with a Plague Marine Icon Bearer. Now this is a nice little miniature, uh, just basically a captain, something that stands out in a section of 10 Plague Marines on the tabletop. Uh, a nice, unique little model. The standard stands out, naturally, but uh, a nice little thing to have. So if you're looking just to kind of add a little bit more flavor to your Death Guard army, uh, issue 66 comes with the Icon Bearer. Issue 67 comes with five more Space Marine Scouts. Now these, again, are the older models. Um, they're okay. Uh, I had great difficulty kind of attaching the, the, the night vision parts to their goggles, but uh, look, it was something kind of interesting to paint. Um, if old model kits are your thing, issue 67 comes with a nice degree of them. You have great variety in them. They also come with lots of additions. So, I mean, the, the canopy here and the back, or the bedroll and the, uh, the backpack comes with, um, it comes separately and it's up to you if you want to kind of add them to or not. So there is kind of different variety in the Space Marine Scout, so it is cool for that. And one thing I did enjoy was I was able to use kind of disused Space Marine weapons, or Space Scout, Space Marine Scout weapons as kind of base terrain pieces for other, monitor, other models, such as the Chaos Bond that I'll show you later. But um, a standard enough kit, nothing overly special, but you know, if you do see it, Flying in the Wild, issue 67. There's nothing wrong with it if you're happy to have five more Space Marine Sniper Scouts in your army. Issue 68 comes with the other Hematrope Reactor, uh, pretty much the same as the last one. One thing I did opt to do with this one, however, is um, I opted to put the pipe on a different side. So if I wanted to make a really long terrain piece, um, I could simply put them together and it just gave me that option to kind of have a whole section blocked off if you want to kind of do a tunnel terrain or whatever way you want to set up your terrain in these scenarios or tabletop games. Nevertheless, uh, the issue gives you, this issue gives you your second one. So if you can't get the other issue, this one is certainly an option to find in the wild if you want to get it. Issue 69 came with a Plague Marine Champion. So it's just a unique, uh, Death Guard Marine, but he comes with a little Nurgling wearing a little helmet. He has a power fist in this hand, uh, another Nurgling on top. So he's just a unique figure that stands out. Um, he's quite nice, has a bit of cape on him, has a slung bolter rifle, and has kind of a, an insidious looking melee weapon in the front. Uh, a nice little miniature to kind of catch that is unique enough. So I know that a tenor is a bit pricey for one miniature on its own, but if you are interested in kind of buffing out your Death Guard army with more unique looking kind of characters, issue 69 is one that's worth looking out for. Now issue 70 comes with more paints but no miniatures, but there is a little feature on the white scars. Issue 71 comes with the Sector Mechanicus Crane, which I have to say is a stunning piece to adorn anyone's tabletop. 
Um, it is quite frankly a beautiful model. It was great fun to paint. There was a little bit of fiddliness to it, but I have to say an interesting challenge, especially for people who enjoy the model making aspect of it. However, I must warn you that the f bottom part of the crane comes in a different issue. So if you want to be able to assemble the Sector Mechanicus crane, you need to get the issue with the galvanic servo haulers as well. Otherwise, you'll only have the top part of the crane. Now, it also comes with other little bits like this toolbox is completely superfluous, but I just love the fact it's there along with a kind of a tiny little fire extinguisher. So these are just tiny little bits and pieces that you can add to your tabletop but nevertheless, you know, it adds so much for something so small. Now this in particular was a great thing to paint and make and one I really love having on my table. So that is issue 71. Issue 72 comes with what's called Chaos Spawn. Now they're interesting little kits in that they're kind of, they're very monstery. They're very kind of like there's, you come with a whole load of bits, but I don't know, there's just something about them that seems a little naff. I don't know why, I just, I don't like the sculpts in it. It does give you variety, and I mean, I understand that they're things that are supposed to be kind of, you know, bludged and made up by the warp, but it just seems kind of, I don't know, a little hodgy-podgy. I felt the need to kind of add to them a little bit. Uh, nothing I could do with this one seemed to kind of improve it much. Uh, it's 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 a lack of skill on my part as a painter, but um, I don't know. It's they're just given the standard of the rest of the miniatures. These things just seemed a bit meh. But I did use one of the Space Marine Scout sniper rifles here on the base, and a Space Marine Scout arm kind of severed here to add to this one because he seemed quite plain until I added blood for the blood god all over him. So it's yep, yeah, they're unique enough looking things, but they're a bit too, I don't know, play doughy kind of 80s kind of monster bebop and rocksteady kind of thing to really work for me. But if you like the Chaos Spawn, you get two of them in issue 72. Issue 73 came with two new paints, including uh, Nurgle's Rot and Nilhalak Oxide, which are great paints for kind of adding to your Death Guard Marines. However, there was no miniatures, but issue 74 came with the Death Guard Tallyman, which is a beautiful little miniature. Um, he, I think, costs 20 to 30 euros on his own. So if you can if, if you can flag issue 74, it's a great way to get him. Now, I mean, it's, he has here kind of an, an abacus here on the left. He has a pen that he's taking the tally. He stands out with this nice big standard here in the back and you even have a little nurgling here walking off with uh, scrolls that he's completed. This is a guy who kind of counts the dead and the diseases and has this kind of uh, compulsion to count every single thing on the battlefield. Not a pleasant existence but nevertheless a very unique and interesting character that you can find in issue 74 of Warhammer Conquest. Now issue 75, 76, 77 and 78 were highly anticipated issues because it came with the Repulsor tank. Now, this thing was fun to paint and assemble. The assembly guide is quite good. Um, it does give you options for the top here in terms of like say the, uh, the smoke charges being closed, uh, having a Marine there with two or three different poses. You have the options of the door being back open here at the back. Um, a very, very fun uh, terrain kit to get, but it still costs about 40 euros to get it from all the specific issues. Um, you could get all the sprues in three of the issues and the fourth issue comes with the base. So up to yourself if you want to kind of skip out on the base part. Um, it doesn't come with any transfers, but nevertheless, it was something I enjoyed painting and it really stands out on the battlefield. Now, I know that a lot of people are anticipating this one, but uh, yeah, the, the Repulsor tank is a pretty cool thing to have in my army, and it was a very fun thing to paint, especially because I got to read four issues of the magazine uh, in painting it rather than just the one. So that is issues 75 to 78. And the very last 
two issues are the Magnavent walkways, issues 79 and 80, in which you have the final and biggest piece of terrain, which was, quite frankly, a huge amount of plastic, but great fun to actually paint. Um, this is a terrain piece that, quite frankly, takes your breath away. Uh, huge. Um, you can assemble it whatever way you want, but I opted to go for the actual assembly that's in the piece itself. It's great for cover. It's great for kind of a HQ. It's nice and high. You can put miniatures up on it very easily. It was actually quite quick to paint because a lot of it was just dry brushing. So you give it you give it the base, and then you do a dry brush. So I mean, for this one, for example, I had it primed black, and I just gave it a dry brush of um, a kind of a, a brass scorpion, and it brought out most of the details. The rest of it was just kind of adding here and there, wherever you want. Um, I wasn't overly looking forward to painting this, but despite myself, I actually quite enjoyed it because it is a huge terrain piece and it is the final two parts of the Warhammer Conquest. Now, I have to say this was a lot of work to do. Um, if it wasn't for the current global crisis, I don't know if I would have done it, but nevertheless, uh, I'm thankful for the Warhammer Conquest issues because if in the future, if my kids ever ask me what I did to stop myself going nuts during the periods of lockdown, I can show them this video and hopefully they'll get as much enjoyment out of these toys as I will. Uh, so this is Sean from The Lucky Roll. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. I hope it is useful to you because there are an awful lot of these issues still for sale on eBay and perhaps if Hachette ever decide to re-release these issues you will know what to look out for. Um, but nevertheless it was quite a journey and uh, it's at least one fond memory personally that I will have from the year 2020. So until next time this is Sean from The Lucky Roll. If you enjoyed this video please like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff and until next time good luck, God bless and please stay safe.